Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Theatre Com video, let's discuss recent comments by the developer Forge Reply. Um, they've recently been working on a title known as In Space We Brawl. Pretty cool looking game, actually. It's a twin stick space shooter. Not amazingly innovative, but it's focused primarily on multiplayer mayhem, to quote their own words, and basically is up to four players, as far as my understanding goes. Now, there's a lot of talk at the moment in media, as we know, about the whole 30 frames per second and resolution gauge and all of that jazz. And this is a pretty delicate topic because I don't want to come across as aggressive towards one particular party. Um, but I do think that this actually somewhat exemplifies one of the issues in the gaming industry right now. Um, I'm going to go through the comments, they're not particularly lengthy, it's actually just a couple of sentences from the from the developer. Um, the chap who was actually interviewed, I'm probably pronouncing his name incorrectly, but he's the development manager as well as a developer, so, you know, he's got a, he's got a couple of hats he's wearing, which is typical in a smaller indie studio, which is fair enough, I, you know, it just is, a, is how it is. Um, his name is Alessandro... Mazenga. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I probably butchered it terribly and I can only apologise to the poor fellow. But anyway, he explained that porting the title to the PlayStation 4 was super simple. Uh, this is in an interview with Jewel Shockers, just so we're all on the same page. And I'll point out in a second why I am making this video, but um, let's, let's get the preface out of the way first. He said that PlayStation 4 is a great platform, which it is. I think both next generation consoles are. And the first time they launched the title um, on the console in the studio, it ran at 680 frames a second, and therefore they, they basically put a frame rate limit on it. And he added that for a 2D game like In Space We Brawl, the console as well, these are his words, maybe even too powerful. And so immediately, and this is the primary focus of this video, everyone's just kind of jumped on that quote. Um... There are, of course, two sides of the camp. The first are those who are immediately jumping on the guy and saying, well, it's because it's a very simplistic looking game. And you can't really deny that. I mean, this title could easily have been done on the previous generation consoles. It does have some quite nice light sourcing and so on, but that's about it. I'm not taking anything away from the game. As we all know, graphics do not make of a good gamer. That's why the original Marios that are still on like the SNES and the, even the original NES and I've even been looking at some retro games right now actually on the Genesis like for example the amazing Spider-Man vs the Kingpin and I've got to say it looks really cool, it reminds me of some really cool uh, games that I used to play when I was younger very young actually but beside the point in other words you know not taking anything away from the uh, studio just because the graphics aren't the most complicated they don't look like something that was produced in you know super high definition unreal engine 4-esque um you know situation it's just using the unity engine which is fair enough it's a very robust engine um, I have a little bit of experience with it, and James on the channel has quite a lot of experience with it too, um, since he's a developer and all. But, the problem I've got primarily with this quote, and I don't feel that the person who made the quote um, did it in a negative light. I, I genuinely I feel that the reason they chose those words is just simply to say that the PlayStation 4 specifications are more than adequate and the game was easy to port, which is... Pretty accurate, I mean, let's face it. The PS4 hardware is easier to work on the Xbox Ones for the most part. However, since SDK updates, since the Xbox One has had a few API changes, and since the development tools as a whole have become a lot better for the Xbox One, initially they sucked, but now they're a lot more robust from what I'm told, it's not really that bad to work on Xbox One titles now. Um, especially if one is not too fussed over the graphical fidelity, in other words, for titles like this. And so the primary purpose that I'm making this video, and I do, I'm acutely aware of the irony of the fact that I'm making a video over something that I'm not exactly complaining about, but I am making a video about. Um, and that's the fact that these very small development developer bytes can be used really quite 
out of context, I would say, with console wars, and it's it, it's very tricky as a it's a fairly fine line that most of us in the reporting slash news slash gaming industry have to make to basically be fairly accurate, but at the same time attract a viewer attention and the reason I've got problems with this is because it's not so much technologically advanced websites which are really pushing this um, and therefore doing a decent analysis or before providing background and context or even how can I put this but yeah, I would say background context or analysis on the comments. There's no, they're, they're just letting kind of the comments section run wild. And I don't feel that that's very healthy. Furthermore, the other problem I have is that the way they're coming across, they're making, uh, and a lot of these sites, I'm not saying all of them, but a couple of these sites are making it sound like the PlayStation 4 is so powerful that it could possibly rip a hole in the fabric of reality. And it's not as though a console can be too powerful. Let's even assume the PS4 specifications were 7 times, 8 times, 20 times the performance it currently is, which isn't really possible with the level of technology we have. But let's just, for the sake of pure nonsense and argument of hypervolt, let's just assume that it could be. Let's assume that we had a processor inside which was like, almost 20 teflops of computing performance, right? Just ridiculous amounts. Is that too powerful? Well, it would be... And let's assume that, once again, we could do this at a reasonable price point. Let's say Sony had invented something that was just profound, right? That's just for the sake of ridiculousness. How would it be too powerful? Do you really think the developers would not use it? And particularly when we're starting to deal with 4K now? No. 4K plus... Um, ridiculous special effects and so on and so on. I mean, look, it's not going to be too long until PC GPUs are starting to hit, hit six T flops, and even then, we're going SLI. If you really want to start going 4K, and admitted that you do have the inherent issues with uh, PC architectures and inefficiency, some of that is being remedied with both the Mantle API and, of course, DirectX 12. But I digress. So even if you were to say, um, and assume 100% efficiency in API and, you know, the architecture itself, which is obviously rubbish. But even if you say were to say that PC GPUs aren't what I would consider to be too powerful. And so that's, that's pretty much the issue I have with this statement. Well, not so much the statement, but how um, so many seem to take advantage of this. And this is another symptom of issues that I've mentioned before with developers. Um... When the consoles were initially being launched, everyone was extremely interested to know, you know, what, what's going to be running. But now I understand, for the most part, big titles, like, for example, Assassin's Creed, it's going to be interesting to know what the resolution is going to be. And, of course, there's that whole issue with Ubisoft and visual downgrades. That's one of the reasons that I've personally covered it, because Ubisoft, to be honest, still haven't... Um, in my mind anyway, satisfactorily answered what's going on with either the performance or resolution. And they've contradicted themselves so many times, I think that's worthy of discussion. But when you're de dealing with smaller indie titles, which aren't visually impressive, it's not really a surprise to anyone that they're running at 1080p slash 60 frames per second. In actuality, in my personal opinion, if the title wasn't running at that frame rate and resolution, I for one would be pretty damn disappointed. I don't feel that anyone is actually w wishing to use these titles for harm or or the developer actually meant anything by it specifically. I just more mean and find it funny that huge websites in some cases can take games, not necessarily like this one, um, but very similar quotes. You run with those quotes, run with those stories and really start pushing that stuff um, from a very small indie developer and use that to really highlight the performance of a machine, and yet simultaneously tearing down um, other quotes from developers such as Ubisoft with the whole visual downgrade system, um, which of course has been really in play at the moment on Assassin's Creed. Anyway, this has been a little bit of a ranty video, and I don't mean anything by it, necessarily. I don't, 
I'm not particularly blaming anyone. I think this is just more of a symptom of the industry that we're in, unfortunately. But I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on this one. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care, and bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.